This is a podcast about both having autism and living with someone who has autism. My mom is Sonia, and I'm Josh, and this is Josh Has Autism. Hey everybody, welcome to Josh Has Autism. Hello. Josh, I have something very specific that I want to talk to you about today. Okay. All right, so something happened yesterday with work. You had, I don't even know what it was called. Was it a training? Uh, it was, I don't even know what to call it. Uh, okay. It was part training, part uh, award ceremony, part... Like team building? Yeah. Right. And it was uh, required for everyone that works at the library system, uh, for all the libraries in, in the area, to attend it. And so it was... From really early in the morning for a full eight hours. Right. Which is about like seven hours and 45 minutes more than you would like to spend interacting with (laughs) (laughs) with people in that kind of setting, right? Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I want to talk to you about. Is there anything that you can share on how you manage... Um, your well-being in order to get through a situation like that. Because a lot of times we talk about, like here at home, that we know what you need. Mm -hmm. And you leave all of us and go into your room. You remove yourself when you need a break, when you need to recharge. Yeah. But we've never really talked about what it feels like to you when you can't do that. So I want to know that. And I want to know what you do to help yourself get through that. So let's start with how does it feel when you're in a situation that you can't get away from everybody? Again, with that, how does this make you feel? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how does it make me feel about what again? <laughs> Sorry. Just having to be in the situation and you can't escape. You know, you can't get away from that constant right demand on your attention and your senses and right yeah so let me try and go through what what uh what happened yesterday okay and then i could probably answer your question okay actually it might even answer your question as i'm doing okay so uh so normally uh for the days that i normally work well let me start with that on a normal day i work at most seven hours and that includes an hour-long lunch or that does not include an hour-long lunch so from start to finish it would be like eight hours Mm -hmm. including the hour-long lunch but usually for that for when that lunch happens I'm not really interacting with anyone. I'm just eating my lunch and reading. Mm -hmm. And so it is a time for me to recharge and just be okay. Well, your your daily work schedule, though, is that, excuse me, you're not constantly face-to-face interacting with people. You're in charge of the books and taking care of them and, and bringing them in from the drop-off bins and putting them away, cleaning them up, putting them away, filing them in the correct systems. Right. And so... I, I'm just I'm just saying that even with all of that, there's still interactions going on a lot. Well, and just even if there weren't the interactions, what my guess would be that that's still stressful, even if there were not the interactions, because you are having to do things in a timely um, fashion and there's all the all the activity that's going on around you yeah, that, yeah. so that could be stressful but you you love it so much and it's routine <laughs> yes yes it's, and, it's almost like going through a cycle almost mm-hmm. that has little variants here and there but they're expected variants mm-hmm. and so what made yesterday different was that normally I get up, like, let's say I start work at 10. I usually get up at 
seven thirty. Mm-hmm. So I get there. I leave for work around an hour before I'm supposed to start. And I, once I get there, I gather myself and make sure I'm okay to do it. What made yesterday different was that I had to be there by seven thirty. Mm-hmm. That was just the start of the differences. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I got I left home around seven or so mm-hmm. to get there at seven thirty, just in case, which turned out to be a good thing because I passed by it first because mm-hmm. I'd, I'd never been there before. Yeah, and so uh, I was able to get off on on the little side street, look up where I'm actually supposed to go, Mm -hmm. found out I passed by it right away, and just went Mm -hmm. there, and I actually got there at 7.30. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, so, um, at that point, once I got there, it was constant interactions, and just constantly being around people, constantly being aware of, of so many things going on, which is already a lot of information without being in a situation like this. So, uh... I'll get into the details of, of that of that part of it later, of the, all the information stuff. Okay. Um... So I got there, uh, checked in, which there was a line for that anyway. Uh, and we were directed to go into a, what, what's a big room called? I Auditorium? With a that, conference room? Conference room is more like it, yeah. Uh, and there were 12 tables or something like that. And two of the tables were actually partially filled up with people that work where I work at Grissom Mm -hmm. and uh and so I sat there with them and it was most of what we did was in that room um there was at the very start of it there was uh introductions uh, via videos or whatever I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm kind of being born about it, I guess. But no, not at all. Uh, but I, what I'm trying to, what I, what I'd really want to hear from you, is that when something is structured like that, and mm-hmm. you don't have to make the decisions about what you do next, mm-hmm. is that helpful, or is it um, um, uh, nerve wracking because you're you're you might not be ready to do that thing, but you're being told you got to do that thing. Right. <clears throat> so like yesterday, mm-hmm. because somebody else was in charge of the the the, the day, mm-hmm. was that something that you were makes it easier when something is planned for you or not? In some cases, yes. Uh, this was for a vast majority of it. Uh, the yes, it was better. Uh, on top of that, though, we had also been mailed, not uh, emailed, I should say the schedule for things. Okay. So we knew what was coming up, or at least the bare bones of what it was. Sure. The schedule. Yeah. We were given the schedule. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that that was okay. So that was helpful to you? Yes. As always, like you getting advance notice of yes. what's going to happen is is um, very helpful for you? Yes. Okay. It... It... Uh, vastly lowers the amount of stress I have. Okay. And one of the, or the keynote speaker came up after all of that. And after all of what? After the, all of the uh, introductions and and the uh, videos for people who passed away during the past year. Because mm-hmm. this event happens once a year. Okay. And it it shows all, what all the different branches and people have been doing and stuff. Okay. And so there was that and 
then there was the awards for different outstanding achievements and how long people have been there and everything. Mm -hmm. And then came the keynote speaker. And I the keynote speaker was talking about how to um, what's the word um, being healthy in a, in the work environment mm -hmm. and a lot of it I've worked through myself or had help learning to do through all the all, all the years mm -hmm. with uh, different people helping me. Mm -hmm. So it was a little bit boring, but it was, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, well, I mean, a lot of, most people I think have probably not had as much exposure to conversations that involve like how to manage your energy. Yeah. You know, how to maintain, even if you're in an environment that's not comfortable, how to, you know. Yeah. I, most, you know. It, it, you, this, was, this was more about taking care of your health. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, uh, and ways to meditate about it or something. Okay. And one thing that was really helpful during this keynote speech. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even a speech, really. It was so, interactive okay, and everything. Cool. But yeah. uh, the last part of it was like a meditation visualization thing. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I do appreciate about about this whole thing was that she even said, if you can't sit here and do this, that's fine. You can go out and you can go out and if you need to, that's fine. So I did. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, and that was one thing that was really interesting to me about this whole thing was that a lot a lot of the people that were doing these things because uh, were saying. If you need to step out for a minute, you're more than welcome to. Mm -hmm. And that, is, from my understanding of things, is not normal, I guess. I say normal, but I mean, what is? <laughs> but, um, but we're still required to be there. Mm -hmm. And so, um, anyway... Uh, I'm I'm trying to. That's okay. Uh, but something you know that that I realize that you know we talk about your the library that you work in, mm -hmm. and we always talk about how accommodating they are, and um, by that I mean they're very um, um, understanding, and they are they excel at explaining what needs to be done how it needs to be done, when it needs to be done, and if you have any concerns about that or any issues whatsoever, they give you the steps to, you know, how to who to go to. And then whenever you've gone to that person, they really do their very best to help you to get answers to whatever questions you have. Right. And um it seems like a very um kind place to be yeah from the sounds of it it's it's comes from not just your library but for you know citywide yeah. that that's their approach which is to be kind to all the people that are employees of the library yeah and so it sounds like that was just you know verified at this meeting yesterday this yearly event that you have, yeah. where you know that continued, yeah. recognizing all of you as, 
you, you, you have different needs at different times. So if you can sit here and do this and you'll benefit from it, wonderful. If not, you have, you know, an, yeah. another option. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times, you're right, you go to, the, you go to those kind of um, meetings and when you say it's mandatory, well, yes, you sit there and, you know, you can't escape. So it's just a very, can feel very um, stuck feeling yeah. for just anybody. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm glad that they gave you that option. So you, I'm not surprised. You didn't want to meditate. You left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, so it was a lot of that. Not meditation, but just a lot of having to be in a group situation mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. where I could get away a bit but I was mm -hmm. still in the midst of everything yes and the thing that I um, was thinking about yesterday when you were uh, when you were gone all day is that a lot of times when you go into these events the lights are bright there's a lot of people there um, so there's um, a, a, a lot and people talking and then there's noises all around you because let's just say like you know in a, in a typical scenario people could forget to silence their phones so a phone goes off somebody yeah. wants a you know p piece of candy or a, a mint or something so their wrappers <laughs> are, you know making a noise yeah. somebody else is maybe unzipping their their purse yeah or maybe somebody's sitting in a chair that makes noise you know um yeah. for you um i know that when somebody's writing it's, you can, even you're even in tune with the sound of the pencil as it's moving across the paper yeah and so that's without having to take in information that you're get being given so you're in lights that are brighter than what you're comfortable with. I know that because all places are. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. Any, places like that. Yeah. Um, so what did you do? How did you... So back to the original question. When you can't get out of a situation that you really want to get out of, again, it doesn't mean that anything is wrong with what's happening. I'm right. not saying that. I'm not right. saying they did anything that was you know, made you uncomfortable. But for you, that's the kind of scenario that just makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. And so what did you do to, to get through that? To be honest, I almost didn't. I, during the last couple of hours, I was starting to crash to, as much as I hate to say it, shut down. Mm -hmm. And you know why I hate that term. Sure. Because you feel so, you've told me before that you feel like you're getting like kind of pulled apart. Everything yeah. is just so intense, and yeah. you feel everything so much that it's just uncomfortable. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this was. Have you ever had a computer where it's there's so much memory that's already filled up, mm -hmm. and it won't accept anything else? Mm -hmm. That's kind of what was going on. There was just so much information that I didn't have a chance to recover from through that entire time that I, could, at that point, could barely accept any more. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I have um, a, a good friend, um, and Dr. Green, who is a doctor of Chinese medicine. Yeah. And she's brilliant. And she's one of my dearest friends. I just love having conversations with her. Yeah. We talk about anything and everything, <laughs> right? And there are times where it's so much information and such a, oh my, she's just a, a wealth of knowledge. It's just amazing. Anyway, there are times I'm having a conversation with her and I say, uh, all right, Patty, I'm full. <laughs> I'm full. <laughs> I'm, yeah, that's the limit. Yeah. That's the limit. So let's just you know switch subjects and take it easy now. Yeah. Um, yes, because there's so only so much that you can take in and take in and take in and then process. Yeah. And have a place for it. Yeah. 
Um, because it gets to a point for me anyway that when I'm taking information in, it begins to not register anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I had the 100 yard stare or whatever going on as well. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Because I could barely even focus what I was seeing. Mm-hmm. It was just that overloaded with information. Yeah. And. Was it when you first went in there? In, in that scenario, you, you you know you first settled in your seat, mm-hmm. and, and and everything was just starting first thing in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, were you able to find um, any level of, of of comfort at all early on? Yes, because I was still amongst the group of Gr- of Grissom employees. Okay, and my so, coworkers. So all the people that you know. Yes. Uh huh. And so that was really a big help mm-hmm. because it was a known mm-hmm. in a time where I didn't I had never even been to this place before. Right. And a lot of the employees for the different libraries I didn't know. Mm-hmm. So it was a comfort in that regard. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so whenever this overload happen or whatever yeah I don't think I was very coherent when I was talking but I one thing I do know is that whenever an issue occurs or or uh, I start to get overwhelmed with anything at work I know that I that I can go to Terry which is my boss mm-hmm. and Tell her, hey, I'm. I just need a minute, mm-hmm. or or fifteen, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and to try and get back into mm-hmm. being okay. Right. And luckily, she was still in the room. Okay. Uh, when this was happening. Was it early on? No, this is midday. Like, no, this is like a, within three hours of us finishing. Okay. And uh, I was able to talk to her, say that I needed to go out for a little bit, just to be okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually did say that. I need, uh, I need to go out to be okay. Mm-hmm. And she's like, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was very helpful in, uh, to make that okay. Right. And... Afterwards, I was feeling a little bit better, mm-hmm. um, and I, I was able to actually talk coherently at that point, point. Mm-hmm. and she and I, I, I asked her, I know I have to be here for eight hours, what, uh, what happens if I can't? Mm-hmm. Because I was still pretty overloaded at that point, right. and... She's she. What she said was that while you're supposed to be here for eight hours, if you can't, you can make up the hours on a different work day. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that was a bit of a relief, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I kept that in mind and was trying to work out the math to do the hours and stuff. Mm, excuse me. Cause so you were looking for an out because you felt so uncomfortable. Yes. Right. And by the time it took, excuse me, it would have taken at least 15 minutes to get to the point where I could have done that mm-hmm. based off the hours I had left in the week. But by the time that that time came around my mind was already settling through and processing things better. Okay, good. And I was able to finish up that portion of of what we were doing. I I, I know it I know it sounds kind of ridiculous. It was what does? Not ridiculous. Um 
You were gearing up for a question. I'm sorry. Yeah, just about what you're talking about right now. Yeah. Um, and what was it? How? <laughs> um, hmm, shoot. So I'll, I'll, I'll expand a little bit okay. on it. So by giving my, by having something to focus on work, uh, a problem to work through that not only, uh, was about something that is of interest or affects me, mm -hmm. but also takes my mind off of what's going on. Mm -hmm. By working through that and everything for those 15 minutes or so, yeah. it, it allowed me to kind of step back from what I was, from what was occurring in the, in the room and gave me that break without leaving. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a full recovery thing at all, mm -hmm. but it was enough to get me through the rest of that part of the session, part of the day. Mm -hmm. um, that part specifically at the time I had uh, before the 15 minute thing of figuring it out right. I had 45 minutes left in that part of it okay and so I was working through that that problem of how much time can I actually do before I have to say I can't do anymore mm -hmm. and still have have the hours that I needed right and so I <clears throat> sorry by working through that it took my mind off of the outside stimuli trying to figure this out mentally and it lowered the, not, maybe not the stress level, but the overload amount back to a somewhat manageable level. Mm -hmm. And I was able to get through the rest of the day, which was like an hour and a half at the point of I'll be okay and I came home and crashed <laughs> yeah when you came home you just passed out yeah and uh, the kids were over for dinner um, and RJ was here for dinner mm -hmm. and you ate in your bedroom because you could not take any more interaction Right, Any, especially with the with the kids. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know what this feels like for you, but I try to think of the worst feeling that I have, that I, the 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 sensation and the experience. I cannot stand being scared. Right. I hate it. Right. I don't watch scary movies. Um anything close to that. I just right. I just don't. Um that feeling of that intensity of something going to happen, what's going to happen, you know. The stress and then the adrenaline hitting. Yeah. And and it and it hurts yeah. my body. And it's not it's not fun. I I've told you that that my my friend Karen loves this kind of stuff and she says that she, when she feels scared, she feels so m most alive than ever. Right. She, it's a, a rush for her. Right. For me, it's it's almost like a panic. Yeah. And it feels so miserable. Like I cannot wait to get away from that feeling. Right. When I hear you talking about this, when I see you in situations like this, that's something that I think about. Like that that's the closest thing that I could probably come to that matches what you describe sometimes just this overwhelming 
feeling um, emotionally, mentally, physically, and I just want to escape that. Yeah. And so all of these things are going on with you then. And what was the... So then you did a fantastic job of just taking that time away that you were given and processing you know to getting getting away from that experience and then starting to process what's going to work and what's not going to work which I'm totally impressed that you were able to logically work through that when you were so stressed already right I, it's pretty amazing I was I was surprised about that too really and uh one thing that really surprised me I guess mm -hmm was the fact that it did lower that amount of, for lack of a better saying, internal nope. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Well, and I think that the, the understanding that your boss had with your, you went to her with this and she responded in the way that is exactly what you needed. Yes. And... That seemed that's consistent yes. with this with this job, which is, you know, I think one of the huge reasons why you're so happy there. Yeah. Um, there are situations where people are not given that that time that they need to recover, or not given that those moments just to. Take a breath yeah. to, to get out from all of the stress. Yeah. Because people that don't have that experience don't understand that from the time you walk in and sit down, what you're describing is that you're with familiar faces. So like, okay, I'm here. I'm on time. Mm -hmm. I'm with people that I know. This is okay. Yeah. As the day goes on, there's so much information that you are taking in. And while other people might not be aware of all the things that are on the periphery that you're taking in, yeah. just if you think about it, if you're listening to speakers for that, for an all day seminar type of a thing, it can be exhausting. And that was only part of it. Mm. Part of what happened there during the day. There were also group games and all this other stuff where it was all timed and oh. just, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You yeah. were in a group activity that was timed? Yeah. Oh no. And they didn't really uh, manage it very well. Who like, didn't? The people overseeing it or the group that you were in? Overseeing it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Tell me about the, um, the, how did people choose their groups? randomly mm -hmm. it was just hey if you want to do it yourself cool try and do it with a group of group of people okay <laughs> and did you find a group or did they find you and we just did it at the table okay with with the people that we work with okay. that i work with mm -hmm. well i guess we all work together anyway but <laughs> were you were you were you stressed because it was timed a little bit um usually that answer is yes that you felt comfortable because you were with people that you knew yes and the game itself was do you remember what uh what, what mr Bart would do with me whenever we were riding in the truck uh to, to deliver hay would ask you who was well in regards to music yes the same thing that uh -huh. We would do all the time, which was who's singing this? Yeah, what's, what's the name of this? Yeah, yeah. That was essentially what it was. Oh, uh -huh. but it wasn't just for classic rock or country. Mm -hmm. It was like pretty much all music, but classical. Yeah, I will say this for people that are listening: that's one of the things that we started doing, and when I started doing this with you when you were real little. Yeah, because. You, for the longest period of time, would not know anybody's name that was in your class. Right. Um, you would just know the teacher's name. 
Right. And yeah. I would identify by what they were wearing or something, not necessarily what they looked like. Mm -hmm. Which would not be helpful from day to day. <laughs> right. And so in order to get you connected to individuals and um, their voices and the names of things, we started doing that on a, on a regular basis with listening to music. Who is this? And what's the name of the song? Yeah. Yeah. And 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 I I'd say that we kind of stumbled on it because um, it was something that was fun, mm -hmm. and it was also some a way for you just to begin to think differently. Yeah. Yeah. And it helped. It did. It did. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny that that's what they did. I know. <laughs> they didn't go by the name of the of who was performing it, though. Mm -hmm. They only did the titles of the song, which included theme songs to TV shows. Oh. Yeah. Wow. And so uh, it was interesting, especially when some of the songs were like, why would half of us even listen to this? <laughs> uh, yeah. But it... It was... Well, they had something for everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was different. It was a way to... I, I guess it was kind of a way to step back from being the serious kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But it was also a way to connect with the people around you. Mm -hmm. And... It, it was, uh, it wasn't, to me, it wasn't as stressful as it might have been mm -hmm. because right. of my experience of doing that for one. Right. That's so cool. Yeah. And, uh, what was stressful about it was the time for it. They'd play 10 seconds of song or whatever, mm -hmm. and we'd have... 15 seconds to write it down at most mm. and then they'd move on to the next one could you talk to one another about we could but there was also a lot of we can't talk too loud because then the, then oh, the next right. pe the people in the next group will hear us and right, right. did you like guys write it down in the show that everybody else pretty much yeah, yeah okay and uh we actually got a fair amount of them right mm. and uh that sounds fun yeah but yeah, so that was just one of the games we did. Mm -hmm. And then we also had, were, uh, we had catered lunch, oh. which we had decided weeks prior, and no one really remembered what they had ordered. <laughs> and then whenever we uh, went and got in line to get our food, it wasn't necessarily already prepackaged or anything like that. It was, hey, do you remember what you, what you ordered? Okay, here you go. <laughs> so that wasn't... Uh, very helpful right but uh yeah i was also one of the first in line so, uh so for food for food yeah <laughs> and uh yeah so they had uh pulled chicken pulled pork and vegetarian burgers mm -hmm. and because i was first in line i, I of course got all the burn it burn ins mm -hmm. from the pulled pork right and so Okay. Didn't even finish the sandwich, but oh. anyway, uh, it was just even during lunch though, which is the time that I normally recharge. Mm -hmm. I was still Around immersed in, immersed in conversations right. that were involving me. Mm -hmm. So you were included, which is a very positive and really cool thing. Yeah, and <clears throat> what you're saying is that. Your your hour lunch break every day is is just such a help because you get to go have that time to yourself and recharge and and yeah exactly and recharge and yeah. you didn't get that right um just because I think that it's important to to realize that with it's not that the content is over your head. It's not that it's difficult content that you're dealing with right. or subject matter. Right. You're smart enough to be able to take all of it in. Right. It's not that at all. It's all of the senses that are constantly 
taking in information, taking it in, taking it in, taking it in. Yeah. And the way that you put it today was you're full. You're full. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't have well, any I, more I think, room. I think technically you're the one who said it like that. But oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, but it, it gets to a point, like, if you're full and the stuff is still coming at you, yeah. it's like it's hitting you and yeah. it hurts. <laughs> right? It doesn't, it doesn't feel good after that. Right. And, and as you're getting full... As you're taking all this information in, <laughs> I know that you don't like having it done that way anyway. Right. You like little bits at a time. Right. And that I can then parse down to understand it. And then once I get it, I get it. Mm-hmm. And then I can take more. Mm-hmm. So... Which is, I think, is one of the reasons why, like, having a conversation, when I say a conversation, whenever I get in trouble, or would have gotten in trouble whenever I was younger, and it would take seemingly forever, to me at least, (laughs) to be told, you can't do that, Mm -hmm. or that was wrong, or whatever. Right. It wouldn't stick as well as if you you just came right out and said it, and then that was it. Right. Right. Yes, because for a long time, I thought that you needed explanation as to why something would work or why something would not work. And in actuality, what you needed is that in little in little spurts and little bits. The shorter, the better. The more right. concise, the better. The clearer, absolutely the, the better. Yeah. So it doesn't need to be long. It just needed right. to be, you know... As they say, short and sweet. Yeah, it didn't need to be reiterated or... Yeah. or put in different ways. Right, you know. unless I asked for it. Right, right. Yeah. So, it, yeah, it was a lot of information. And, you know, one thing that I would like to point out is that this kind of... And as you said, the full feeling mm-hmm. is different than being absolutely overwhelmed. Like the shutting down, like I said, sure. the shutting down is different than being the full. Okay, it feels different yeah. because when I'm overwhelmed, I'm still feeling, still getting all of this information, and it's so much I need to get away from it. When I'm this full kind mm-hmm. of thing, I'm beyond that. I am so full that I can't take in any, any more information. Um, say that again. Say that again, because I, I. So. Because uh, that... if you're overwhelmed, that the reason I'm asking you to say it again is because I thought it was just the opposite. If you're over, so let's just use the term shutting down. Mm-hmm. If you're to a point that you're shutting down, you're not. Yeah, clarify this. So, like, when the you're just when you've just the had overwhelmed this... is shutting down. Okay. So, uh, so overwhelmed that I'm shutting down is it's going to be a bit more mid- more bit. I'm going to use it anyway. Okay. Whenever someone's drowning, they're overwhelmed by the water. Right. But once they can't do anything about that anymore, and they're relax. Not so much relaxed, cause, but at that point, when there's no more struggling to breathe or anything, okay. there's nothing else going on, because they can't do anything else. Okay. That's the equivalent of what happened. Being so full that you can't take in anymore. It's not I'm, very. It's not. I'm gonna ask you again, so that I understand. Yeah. Being, you're describing two different things. Yes. Being, being overwhelmed is the same thing as shutting down because there's so much information that I can't uh, cope with it. Okay. Where and, I, and getting to a point that I refer to as being full, for me, that's okay. That's enough. I can't take in any more information, in. that's enough. That, to me, is full. How is that different from shutting down to you? Because that is my point of overwhelmed. 
equivalent of your, okay, that's enough, is my overwhelmed. Okay. And because what? I'm still hearing the information. I'm still getting the information at that point. I know that I'm having enough that I, that I should not take in anymore. Did, okay. Help me to understand this. I'm going to ask you a third time. I'm sorry. Because I'm not getting it. You, there, are there two different things? There's just a point where, okay, I can't take any more information in. And then there's you shutting down. No. Are those two different things or are they the same thing? They're the same thing. So we're talking about, with you, you're talking about one thing. Yeah. Okay. So um, uh, a different analogy then. Well. I think it's better than the other one. Sorry. I, I think it'll explain it a little okay. bit better even. Okay. Whenever you eat too much food, mm -hmm. you know you can't eat anymore. Mm -hmm. And so you stop. Mm hmm that's when you that's when you say I have too much information I'm I'm I can't have any more right for me that would be the equivalent of overwhelmed or shutting down whereas this step is beyond that what step of I can't even take in any more information because it's um, It's like you're done processing. You can't you can't process anything else. Right. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And I think that that must happen faster for you because you are so aware, you're keenly in tune with everything that's going on around you. Yeah. And you're taking it all in at once. So while, so while, if you didn't have all of that other stimulus going, uh, stimuli going on, mm -hmm. you would be able to listen to somebody's conversation longer. But because there's everything else, it shortens the um, time frame where you're able to really focus and listen to what's being said mm -hmm. and take that information in and process that. Yes. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah, and it yeah. it becomes going back to the computer analogy now. Mm -hmm. It is incapable of taking in more information mm -hmm. because it's so full, mm -hmm. and so not, it, and so it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And there becomes a point when you are feeling so. Um, this feeling is so awful and so overwhelming that you need to, the only thing that you can focus on then is to make it stop. Yeah. And to make it stop, in this case, you needed to have a break. Yeah. Here at home, you need to remove yourself from all of our nonsense <laughs> and, go, and go to your room yeah. and, and, and just and recharge that way. Yeah. Yeah. And what... That, tell me if this is true or not, that if somebody makes you stay in a situation, if there's just no way of getting out of it, yeah, it's not going to help you because you're done taking information in. Right. You're done with that. You might have to be there physically, but there's no more information being taken in. There's right. no more participation that's going to take place. Right. And that's, that's true, yeah. <clears throat> If you're in a situation where you cannot remove yourself, is there something that you can do to help to yourself to get through that? Or that's just not a possibility you have to remove yourself? Uh, let me try to explain it. Uh... In this particular situation uh, that happened yesterday, having someone that can tell me you're not supposed to be able to, but here's an option, mm -hmm. was that made a huge amount of difference. Right. Because it gave me something to focus on. Right. 
rather than be completely overwhelmed beyond anything mm -hmm. even the ability to function and i th and i think that what you're saying is that had she not helped you by giving you an alternative an o another option right and by her giving you that you know that 15 minutes there that you needed yeah i think that what you're saying is you would have had to have left yeah and it if i had not if i didn't work where i work if i was in a situation like that where i'm not allowed to leave number one that's against the law but uh <laughs> Uh, to hold someone where they can't get be. Uh, but it is one of those things that I would... It's like... You know how whenever... Uh, you realize you have like a tiny ant crawling on your arm, mm -hmm. and then you just feel it, and it's like, ah, <laughs> no, yes, yes, and 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 try and brush it off and everything. Mm -hmm. Imagine that, but everywhere, mm -hmm. and you can't get away from it, mm -hmm. and it's just getting worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. For me, that's part of what happens whenever I can't get out of a situation. Where I just can't deal with it. Mm -hmm. And is there anything that you have developed that helps you to cope in those moments before you get to that point? One of the biggest things is being able to tell someone about it that would be able to help you. When you were in school, you used to clench your fists yeah. and then let it go. Yeah. And then clench your fists and then let it go. And that helped you. Yeah, for, that... for a lot of stress things, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I actually brought that up to a couple of people yesterday. Oh, yeah? That uh, uh, that exact situation. Mm -hmm. And that uh, I would do that, but then uh, originally uh, you'd have to come by to the t and tell the teachers, hey, he's not about to go and deck someone. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it's the way he's coping. He's yeah. not about to be violent. He's yeah. coping. Yes. Yeah. The other thing that you did is you flipped your pencil. Yeah. Up and down, up and down. You would flip it up and catch it. Yeah. Flip it up and catch it. Flip yeah. it up and catch it. And that movement for you, um, I, I think that that movement, mm. when this this podcast is about you having autism and how you deal with that. Right. From what I'm understanding is that, because you have ADD as, as well. Like mm -hmm. It's just, and in, in, in we've talked about this before, how sometimes it's really hard to tell the the the, the issues and the behaviors, which, which, which one is which, right? Because right, they kind of right. just kind of co-mingle. Right. Um, for, and, for me, the flipping of the pen or pencil... Mm -hmm which I ended up learning how to use a pen that was capped mm -hmm. the hard way <laughs> uh, after catching a pencil and grasping it. Oh, and just, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was partially a thing for me to cope with everything, but it was also a way for me to focus. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And so initially, yeah, so that's that's a really good point because um, initially people will say, well, he, he keeps doing this. And, you know, that people, we had people to help figure this out and you helped us to understand. You flipping that pencil mm -hmm. actually helped you to participate or I should say take in information. Yeah. It's almost like that's your focus. Mm hmm you're doing this, but it's calming you down. Yeah. And as it's calming you down, you're able to take in the information, even though it might not look like you're paying attention. Right. It might not look like you're taking in anything, right. but you are. Yes. And so I think it's important to not 
insist that people stop doing the thing that they're doing um, because oftentimes it is the thing that helps them to cope. It is yeah. the thing that helps them to um, um, stay, focus. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. focus and to, to 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 be to be able to learn and yeah. you know take that information in. Yeah, and it <clears throat> like one of my one of my friends growing up uh, would c- constantly uh, fiddle with different mechanical things. Uh, while classes were going on, mm-hmm. uh, and he was he also has autism, mm-hmm. and just it's different for different people, mm-hmm. but it does help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like um, um, Connor spins sometimes, and it looks like he's not paying attention because he's spinning. If you asked him what was just said, he can tell you exactly what was just said when he's spinning. Yeah. It's super interesting because if you make him stop and you say something, yeah, he doesn't really. He can't focus yes, on you. Yes, yeah. it's 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 fascinating to me. But yeah. yeah, so what do you do now to help yourself to be able to focus? Because you're not. You know, flipping a pencil. Right, but I'm also not sitting at a table or desk uh, to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. What I'm doing is I'm focusing on the routine I do at work. So yesterday you were at a desk, kind a of, table. kind of, yeah. But I didn't have a pen, didn't have a pencil, mm-hmm. and it, it it was not that kind of. Scenario. Okay. I guess. I got it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was more of a presentation almost to us mm-hmm. that we could take part of a little bit. Yeah. So, I, yeah. yeah. Are you still worn out from it? A bit, yeah. 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 It does, it, it, it takes an awful lot of your energy, doesn't it? It does. Just to be. Um, present yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. It's um. Yeah. It's it's something that's that's exhausting, which is why, for you, going to college was uh, a difficult undertaking because, in this scenario, probably I would say the presentation was interesting it was about your work it was about what you love doing it was about the libraries it was you know so that was helpful but you know if you were in in school I remember you would say why I don't want to take that class and if you didn't if you were not interested in the class no matter what it it was for you it wasn't going to work yeah and honestly uh a lot of the keynote speaker's presentation and the late and the later one that she did Mm -hmm. that was that was whenever I couldn't take Mm -hmm. in anymore Mm -hmm. uh especially that part of it was from a class that I failed basically what's that tennis oh what yeah at college Uh the first time I went to college the tennis class was only partly about tennis Right. And everything else about it was about having a healthy life, basically, mm-hmm. with all these different focuses and everything. But it wasn't part of tennis, so it wouldn't, didn't yeah. connect. Yeah, and and also the, in the 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 problem that you had back then was that other people, the rules were put out. This is what you have to do. This is how you you know, have to do something. Mm -hmm. Other people that didn't follow that were not held accountable for that. Mm -hmm. And, and those things that that's the scenario that is just a deal breaker for you. Yeah. It's like, wait a second. These are the rules. These are the rules. Yeah. You can't, you can't say somebody else doesn't have to follow the rules just because. Right. So yeah, that's always a difficult thing. Yeah. Hmm. So, um, I'm extremely, proud of you and impressed that you were able to get through that thanks it's I know that was hard I want to be clear about this though 
what happened yesterday with me uh, figuring out uh, that during that 15 minute thing, mm -hmm. that is new. Okay. That has not happened before where I could still technically be in the situation, mm -hmm. but I remove myself at the same time. That's never happened to me before in a way that I recognized it. I'll uh, say that again. The me having... So you, had, you took a 15-minute break. N this was during a thing where I could not leave. Okay. Uh, so I was still, this was after I was, I was told, I, I asked, uh, Terry if I could leave early mm -hmm. and she gave me that alternate or mm -hmm. uh, that alternative right. and that 15 minutes of me processing and thinking through how can this happen? Mm -hmm. Like, how can I go about this and it'd be okay for work during the rest of the week? That that alternative focus to, uh, well, physically didn't bring me out of the situation. Mentally, it did, and it lowered a bit of a bit of my uh, of my beyond overload. Is it just because you you knew that there was the option of leaving? I think it was that combined with giving me something else to think about that was not what was going on outside of me. And if you were in the room there with stuff still going on. And you were thinking about this other thing. Does that mean that you were able to take in what was happening? Or just that you were able to stay there physically, but you really were not taking anything in at that moment? The last part. Okay. Yeah, because okay. So I, didn't... I, I was so far beyond taking anything in mm -hmm. that I wasn't taking anything in. Right, got it. Which got was it. a bad situation anyway. but Sure. But it just made it so that you could stay there your focus was just somewhere else. Internally, yes. Yeah. Okay. And that really, I don't believe at all that Terry knew that that would happen. Mm -hmm. But I believe that it was honestly a great thing that it did. Right, <laughs> right. Not only because it helped me, but it put it into focus of what might help me in the future and what might help you guys listening. Right. So future. you th right. So you think that what you might be able to do in the future is when you realize that you're in overload, you're not going to take anything else in, you will be able to focus on something else and focusing on something else will help you not to let's say learn from that experience anymore that the information that you're being given, but you don't feel as and um, that that intense feeling, like I got to get out of here. Right, because I was already beyond that, really. And I think it's not so much that it's a different question; it's that whenever whenever I'm focused on one thing, mm -hmm. it's really hard to get me off that track, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And so. In this case, giving me a different problem to focus on that's completely unrelated or not immediately uh, related, immediately visible that it is related because in this case it wasn't whatever. Uh, it, <laughs> sorry. Uh, giving me a different problem to think about that is essentially Throwing the gears off track, I guess, is the way. That, well, how is throwing a wrench in the gears? I guess is the right way to say it. Or well, what I'm asking specifically is that so you're having this experience that feels in your body very, very uncomfortable. Yes. Mentally, you, you're spent. You're not taking anything else in. Emotionally, you're overwhelmed. So basically, you're 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 there, but you're not there. And my question is that in the future, what will you do to try to replicate 
this scenario that you just went through that helped you through that? That's what I'm trying to say, is that even... Uh, dang, those, those feelings you were just saying mm-hmm. don't mesh with what, with what I was feeling. Okay. There's, there's either the overwhelmed, shutting down feeling, mm-hmm. or the not even, no. You gotta get out of there. There's just no way. Uh, at that, at that point, I'm almost past the point of being able to say, "Right, I can't. I need to get out of here." Right. So I'm not at all taking anything in or anything. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I'm saying the overwhelmed part. I'm still taking in all the information, mm-hmm. and I'm feeling horrible about it. When I get to that overload point, I'm not even doing that. Okay. I'm not. E- I'm barely even feeling anything at that point. Okay. But uh, to answer your question, I guess, mm-hmm. um, it's uh, that's what I've been trying to do is to answer that question, is to have to tell someone outside of you that has the ability to change something about it. To say, I need to get out of here just for a minute or so. Uh, and if for them to know prior to if, to, if there is not that possibility of them leaving, to give an alternative to focus on. Uh, to be nice about it, yeah, but absolutely. Mm-hmm. But to give an alternative alternative focus to think about. So I I get what you're saying. So so my question I should have I should have put it this way: Is that something? Is there something that you can do for yourself that helps you? That this experience might have helped you to understand. But what you're saying is you needed somebody else to help you to figure this out. Is there any way that, is there any time so far in your life where you've been able to um, get yourself out of this situation and, and stay put? Or have you just so far left a scenario? And I will say this as an example. It's not just when you're put in a situation that you don't choose to be in where you begin to feel that I can't, you know, like you like you say, like, oh, I can't take this anymore. This is so uncomfortable. I'm yeah. leaving. Yeah. That's happened before at D&D. Yeah. So this is not just limited to times where you, you don't, know. You can't, just don't want to be there. Right. Exactly. It's... Yeah, it 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 varies between things I want to do or not, right. or like to do or not. Right. So it's the best way I can explain it is to not even explain it. Uh, the best thing to do tell someone. It's because a lot of it that I've. Looking back throughout my life, mm-hmm. the best thing that I could do is let someone know, like, well before this kind of situation would come up, mm-hmm. let someone know, hey, if something like this does happen, please try and give me a nudge towards something else completely different. Okay. Or get, or try and give me an alternative to things. Right. And a lot of times... In my experience, they're able to, and that helps so much. Mm-hmm. And it, the times that I have not done that, the only times that I've been able to get out of a situation after being like that is by telling someone else okay. that I'm that how I'm feeling or that I can't do this Mm -hmm. and so that's why I'm saying to 
if you can, try and let someone else know beforehand. Like, not before you're even put in a situation like that. If you know you're going to be somewhere, having someone there that would understand that or try and help or just even be aware that something like that could happen mm-hmm. it is beyond extremely beneficial and helpful. Okay. And even if the situation doesn't occur, just having someone there is also a big relief that no, that would know how to help in that regard. Mm-hmm. So you're saying instead of just trying to take it on yourself... You know, to have somebody that's that's a um, there just to support you and to maybe give you some alternatives. Yeah, um, and that's what's the most helpful for you. Yeah. Okay. And one of the like your example of D and D, I had not done that, so I was stressing myself out, stressing myself out until I just couldn't be there. Mm-hmm. That's happened a couple of times too. Yeah. And letting someone know beforehand Mm -hmm. uh, about how I'm feeling, whatever, it it helps to not only mitigate it a bit, but it also Mm -hmm. helps to uh, prevent it, I guess. A little bit. So, if you if you feel like you've talked to somebody ahead of time, and you feel like there's an alternative that's available, it just kind of helps you to feel better it, in the process. And it, and by giving them a, a, the the knowledge of how to help if the, if it occurs, mm-hmm. it, okay. that is the biggest advantage I can think of to a situation like this occurring. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, because it's not just a surprise to them, then it's something that they can think about beforehand and have a plan for if it happens. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be somebody that that know, that you trust, yeah. somebody that that knows you well, and um, somebody that you're comfortable with sharing. You know that you have these experiences. Yeah. At times, and yeah. just so they're aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. And. Most of the time, it most of the time it's not even necessarily about trusting them with all the stuff I know because it mm-hmm. that's not going to happen a lot of times. Right, sure. Uh, like if someone's running a seminar that you're attending, you've never met them before. Sure. If you're able to, if you or some, or your guardian or whatever mm-hmm. is able to say, hey, if possible, if you see something like this occurring, where da da da. Try and give an alternative to for them to think about to focus on, so it right. doesn't devolve from there. Right. Sure. So it gives them a heads up. It get, it gives them a chance to prepare for something happening. Yeah. Cool. Which would then, if it does happen, de escalates. Right, and you've been very fortunate to have the boss that you do in this job. Mm-hmm. Uh, because you've not always had that. You've tried other jobs, and that wasn't yeah. the case. Right. Mr. Barnt, where you did the hay, of mm-hmm. course, he offered these options for you, Yeah. Um, which is wonderful. Yeah. But in the meantime, from that job to this job, yeah. you know, a couple of jobs that you've had there, it, it was not the case. Right. And it was very uncomfortable, and you ended up leaving. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can only feel overwhelmed day after day for so many days. Yeah. <laughs> Until you go, nope, not worth it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Josh, I am so proud of you for just being able to work through that yesterday. That's a huge accomplishment and uh, such a success. Uh, thank so, you. Uh, yeah, I'm so proud of you, uh, and I'm, I'm and I'm grateful for Terry, your boss. Yeah. And um, and I just love it that you are a part of a a a, a team. You know, that um, all the librarians and all the the staff, you know, you're just part of them. And that's just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. That's very cool. Well, I'm going to think about this more, too. And I probably have more questions for you because this is (laughs) is just super interesting. Yeah. So. And 
Honestly, I think one of the reasons why it took so long for me to be able to explain it better was because a lot of it came together like yesterday. Yeah, like it's <laughs> brand new. Yeah. Right, yeah, right. So well, we can talk more about it too as you have more days to process yeah. and you know, and I'll come up with different ways to ask you about yeah. how this happens and what you do and if you know, if yeah. I have some suggestions for other people. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, everybody. Thank you for hanging out with us today. Um, if you'll give us five stars, that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, if you check us out on the website, um, sonyaking.com, S-O-N-Y-A-K-I-N-G. And uh, what else, Josh? Um, I think that's it. I, I guess. Yeah, yeah. all yeah. right. Thank, thanks yeah. for listening. I hope I hope this is helpful. Yeah, I, it's helpful to me. I hope it helps <laughs> other people yeah. I, that's very enlightening today yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway everybody out there I hope you're having a great day um, hug people that you love let them know that you care about them and, and uh, take care of yourself get some sunshine <laughs> get outside get some sunshine anyway I'll think about th- it <laughs> thank you thanks so much for hanging out with us love you bye